hi and welcome to the holiday season i decorated for christmas this morning i don't have very many christmas decorations so i didn't like filming or anything but you can like see that i have a few behind me and yeah so today i'm going to be going over some winter reading recommendations i'm splitting it into like two parts i have like wintry reads that are like snowy and then i have like christmas reads and so most of the winter reads are thrillers and most of the christmas reads are romance and so that's today's video the first book i'll be talking about is rock paper scissors by alice feeney so this book is about this couple that's having some marital issues and they go on this retreat to it's like a church but they're like only them staying there and they're like having issues and like the points of view are told from like their points of view currently and then like letters that are from like when they first got together and like the secrets are revealed there's lots of twists i didn't really expect like i don't think anything in this book it was like so good i give this book five stars this is one of my first reads of this year really really like it. It's good to read in the winter because it's set like blizzard weather where they are. So it's like very snowy and they're like stuck there. And yeah. So the next one I'm talking about is Shiver by Allie Reynolds. And I don't know where my copy is. I think it's like buried in my bookcase. So I own the book. I really love this book, but I don't have it in my hand. So basically Shiver is about this group of people that were friends when they were like younger and they get invited to stay in this ski lodge from their past. And it's only like the group of them. I can't remember if it's like five or six. It's just them staying there and they don't know who invited them because each one of them got a message from like another person in the group, but that person didn't send it and they get trapped there and they don't know who trapped them there, what's going on. The person who trapped them there wants them to reveal their secrets. It's like a who done it. People start dying. It's told in dual timelines from the like current point of view and then the same girl in the past when they knew each other, they were like all part of like snowboarding competition or something in the past. And yeah, it's just so good. You just don't know what's gonna happen. There is like a subplot of romance, which I usually don't like in thrillers, but I really enjoyed it. In this one, I felt like it like really worked for this one. And yeah, just chilling reveals. Um, it's good to read in the winter time because they're snowed in at like a ski lodge. So yeah. Another book I'm going to talk about, I don't particularly love, but other people do. So I'm going to like mention it. And that is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. I also own this book. It's somewhere. It's right here. So this is another thriller. This one is set like around New Year's. Um, this group of friends rent a hunting lodge. They always do like an annual trip. And so this is their trip this year and they get like snowed in by a blizzard and then someone ends up dead. And I don't, I've read two of Lucy Foley's books. I've read this one and the guest list. I don't particularly like her writing and it's because you don't like find out anything until like the end and it's told from like this one and the guest list i don't know about any further books but they're like told from different points of view and like you don't even know who dies until like near the end of the book like not even like who killed them it's who dies because it's told like the points of view like jump around between like what led up to it and like what happened afterwards and like you don't know who died someone in the group died and you find out near the end and then not too long after that you find out why and then you find out like who both of those books did that and i just i don't know i just that's not like my thing i like knowing some of the stuff up front so I can try to guess it and when like you don't even know who dies like you don't know who dies you don't know why they die you don't know who did it like you don't know any of that till the end and it's like it's just kind of weird in my opinion so I didn't love this one but you know it is like a winter setting because it's around New Year's so it's like snowy and there is like suspense I guess it just wasn't like my favorite but like, other people really like it so I thought I would talk about it. The last book I'm going to talk about is like wintry but it's not a thriller. I honestly don't know what genre you would say this book is in but it is How the Penguin Saved Veronica by Hazel Pryor and I really really love this book. I read it a couple years ago. It's basically about this old woman who has a lot of money and she's trying to figure out what she wants to do with her money when she passes away because she doesn't really have any family and so she's trying to figure out what she wants to do with her money and then she watches this documentary about penguins like this group of like researchers that are in antarctica researching penguins or something like i don't know and then she's like 
I want to give my money to them for these penguins, but I want to go there and see the penguins first. And they're like, ma'am, you're 85 years old. You can't come to Antarctica and crash our research trip. And she's like, I'm gonna. And then she does it because you can't say no to Veronica. <laughs> Another plot that happens in this book is she finds, she like gets connected with like a long lost like grandson and you will find out like why it's like a long lost grandson, but it's told from both of their points of view and he ends up following her to Antarctica to like be there with her, get to know her, whatever. And this book is just like so good. It like, it made me laugh, it made me cry, it made me smile, it gave me all the feelings. It literally is, I guess you'd call it literary fiction, like I don't even know what this book is. It wasn't something I would like normally read, like the, the plot is just like eh, meh. but I did, I got this from like a Once Upon a Book Club. So like I gave it a chance not really knowing what the book was and like yeah the gifts were cool to open but like I just really ended up liking this book. I liked it so much and the writing is so good because it switches her points of view and she's like this prim, proper, old lady, English, you know. And then it goes to this like 20 something year old guy who like lives in a crappy apartment and he like smokes weed and he like can't keep a job. Like, and their voices are like so different. Like you can clearly tell like in their chapter, like in their points of view, like which one you're in. And I feel like a lot of authors when they write different points of view, they like kind of sound similar, but this one, the writing changes depending on the points of view. And I think that's really, good writing and it also makes the story more interesting. So yeah, this one um, is wintry because it takes place in Antarctica. There's snow, there's penguins. Penguins are now my like second favorite animal because of this book. I love it so much. I even, the UK copy is like a different cover and a different title. So I do have the UK copy as well. It's called Away with the Penguins. And I liked it so much that I have both copies. So it's very, very sweet, very cute. I love this book. So now we're gonna get into the Christmas romances, which I personally love reading the month of December. I love Christmas Hallmark movies. Like I know they're not good, like they're not good, but they're entertaining and they just make me feel so like warm and fuzzy that like I love watching them every year and Christmas romance books give me that same feeling. So I love them. So the first series I'm gonna talk about is the Moose Springs Alaska trilogy by Sarah Morgenthaler. It, three books. It is The Tourist Trap, Mistletoe and Mr. Right, and Enjoy the View. So basically these books take place in Moose Springs, Alaska, which is this like little town in Alaska that's like known by tourists. They like flock to this place. Like it's where everyone takes a vacation. And basically the first and third books take place over the summer, but it's like snowy. So it's still that winter feeling. And then the middle book takes place like in December. So it's like Christmassy. The middle book was my favorite, by the way. I think I gave the first and third one like four and a half stars, but I gave the middle one five stars. But I still love the series. Basically each book follows like a different man that lives in this town. They all hate tourists and then they all fall in love with the tourists. <laughs> So yeah, and then they're like all friends, they all interconnect, a couple in this books and the other two books, like you know the gist of romance trilogies. So yeah, this is really really fun. I read this a couple years ago. I read it like before the third one came out, so I read the first two in December and the third one came out like that January. Yeah, this series is just like really really cute. Another thing that makes it really cute is there's like some animal that's like prevalent in each book. That sounds weird, but it's like in the first one it's like a moose. There's like this moose that's like hangs around the guy all the time. I can't remember the animals in the other books, but like, it's just like this cute little touch that makes it like even cuter. But yeah, this is just such a good, cute romance series. And yeah, this is just really cute. Next, I'm gonna talk about another trilogy. So the name of the trilogy is Christmas in Eldovia. You know, one of the made up countries they do for Christmas stories. Yeah, that's that one. So the first one is A Princess for Christmas. Oh, it's the series is by Ginny Holiday. The first one is A Princess for Christmas, and then it is Duke Actually, and then it is So This is Christmas. So the series is so cute. The first one is about the princess of Eldovia. She goes to New York for some event, meets a taxi driver, romance ensues. The second one is about his cousin Danny and her friend Max. And this one's misleading because it looks Christmassy, but it starts Christmas time and then it ends Christmas time, but the middle of the book is like the course of the whole year, which like is a little misleading because not, not the whole book is Christmas. And it's like, that's fine if not the whole book is Christmas, but like you go in thinking it is, so there's that. But that basically they become friends and they're trying to help each other find love or whatever and then they fall in love because of course that's the plot. And then the last one is called So This Is Christmas. This one is about 
like the guy is like a royal advisor for the king and then the their like country their like industry is like watches like classic watches and their like industry is like failing financially so they bring in like a financial advisor to help them and it's like right around christmas time so that's her and so this is like they butt heads a lot so yeah this series is really cute it definitely feels a hallmarky just a little bit it's like a good mix of like that hallmarky christmas movie and then like modern like romance books you know because it's like princess in a made-up country but also like i don't know cute romancy you know each couple features in the other ones and yeah i i'm annoyed that the covers like don't match because like this was i guess the original cover for this and then i don't know if they ever made covers like this to match it or not but yeah so my covers don't match which bothers me but anyway the next book I'm going to talk about is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, which I don't own because it was a book I gave my mom for Christmas one year and then I like read it before I wrapped it and gave it to her. So she owns it. But this book is basically Groundhog Day, but like make it Christmas. It follows Malin, I think is how you say her name. Basically every year for Christmas, her family stays in this cabin with their friends. And so I think it was like a group of college friends started this tradition and then they like all had kids. And so like every year them and their kids have gone to this cabin. So like she's in her twenties, a lot of the other kids are in their twenties and they're still going every year. But then this is gonna be their last Christmas there cause the cabin is being sold by someone in the group. And also she like has a crush on one of the other kids I say kids, like I said, they're like in their like 20s or 30s. But anyway, she like grew up with him and they like have like a mishap and then she's like on her way home from Christmas and then she's in a car accident and then she like wakes up on the way there for Christmas. And so she gets to like do Christmas over and over and over again, trying to make the romance work out and trying to figure out a way to save the house. And while I was reading this book, I didn't love it. I read it in two sittings. So I was like reading it before I gave it as a present. And like I didn't love it, but also when I like put it down in between like picking it up again, like I couldn't stop thinking about it in between that. So like maybe I did like it. I'm still recommending it. It's definitely cute. It's just like not my favorite holiday romance. Next, I'm gonna talk about 12 Days of Christmas by Debbie McComer. Don't know how to say her name. If your mother reads romance, she's probably read her book. Like if you go to use bookstores, the romance section, there's always like those certain authors that have like a whole section that is her. So I've only read her Christmas. I've only read a couple Christmas books by her. This is the first one I read. This one feels exactly like a Hallmark movie. So it is not great, but it's so cute and so entertaining. So basically this girl, the main character like loves Christmas and her neighbor hates Christmas. And so this year she is determined to make him love Christmas. And that's the plot. There's romance. It's like nothing special, but it's very, very cute. I could totally see this being like a Hallmark movie. It's not too long. It's like pretty short. I, I enjoyed it. Like I said, not great, but I enjoyed it. I have read one of her other Christmas books and this one I gave four stars, I think. And the other one I gave two stars. So now I'm just like, do I read more? Do I not read more? But this one's cute at least. The last book I'm going to talk about is a Christmas book, but it's not romance. And you've probably heard of it. It is Skipping Christmas by John Grissom. And this is what the movie Christmas with the Cranks. Yes, Christmas with the Cranks is based off of. Basically, it's like a Christmas comedy. And so this family, the Cranks, decide that they're not going to celebrate Christmas this year. And in their town, Christmas is a really big thing. And so they decide they're not doing Christmas like, I think it's because their daughter's not coming home for Christmas. So they're like not decorating. They're not sending out Christmas cards. They're not making fruit cakes. They're not doing any of that stuff. And like the whole town is just like, what do you mean you're not doing this? And like, they get mad at them. And I remember like not really liking this book that much or the movie that much, but I find myself wanting to reread it and rewatch it. So there's that. And honestly, I couldn't remember what I really felt about this book. And then I like reread my review from when I read this three years ago. So I'm gonna like summarize my review of it from that because that's more accurate than what I think now. Basically, I was saying that I like the conversation that started about like materialism and expectations because like everyone expects Christmas to be this big thing, spend a lot of money, yada, yada. And like, that's not really what Christmas is about. Of course, there's like the holiday aspect, but it's also about like giving and like love and whatever. And so you like go into this book or even the movie and you're like, this is so over the top. Like no one would treat this family this way. But then it's like, I mean, maybe because people really do expect certain things at Christmas time. And 
And so I said that the second half is when I really started enjoying it. And then the ending was like heartfelt, showed like the true meaning of Christmas. So I said, if you're looking for a short, silly and funny Christmas book, this is a good one. So if you follow what I thought when I actually read it, there's that. So yeah, it's very, very little. This is a very small book. The copy I read was like a little mass market copy that was like the movie cover. And then my aunt gave me her copy of this. So I like got rid of my movie cover. But yeah, this is just a short, simple Christmas book. I might rewatch the movie this year because like, why not? So that is all of my recommendations. I haven't really read that many winter books or Christmas books. I have like some that I want to get through like this winter. I don't know if I will though. So that's what I have for today. Those are my recommendations. I, like I said, I have like a couple Christmas decorations up and I have like some Christmas clothes I will be wearing throughout the month. This is one of my cute little funny ones. So that's the one that I wore today, but I have other ones I'll wear. That is it for today's video. So thank you for watching and maybe you'll watch some of my other Christmassy videos I'll be putting out soon. And yeah, bye. So this, basically these, it follows like one, it follows like a character. It,